Bible say? Let's do it together. Good morning, church. <laughs> yeah. Said the sound's not good. I can't hear it either. Well, when they go on vacation and come back, they were telling what might happen. I can't. I can't blame this on Matt. Everybody had a good week? Anything happen in your week that you'd like to share? Well, we had some storms, that's for sure. Amen on the storm. All right. Good to be in the house of the Lord, and it's good to have live stream, and it's good to have YouTube, and it's good to have uh, whatever else they want. From uh, those on live stream, it's great to have you. I hope you get a blessing out of this sermon. Uh, good to see you in the center there. Glad you're back. Pray for uh, Amber. She has a trip to her and Matt. Trip to the doctor tomorrow. They've got back on a long journey. Now they're going to have to turn right around and go on another journey. I'm sure Matt is wore out. He said he got a good night's rest. Well, good for you, Matt. I thought about you last time. Uh, any prayer requests? Other than our usual prayer requests, we pray for those that are on our prayer list, and uh, we pray to God that you would bless them, heal them, and, and uh, that those uh, that have had surgery would have a speedy recovery. Something's happening here. I don't know. Said we was gonna get one to come around to your mouth. I don't know what happened to it. Might might be with my books that we ordered. I thought you said you ordered one. Did you order one? I was so excited about it. I thought any day now that might will come in. Yeah, you haven't even ordered it yet. Read. Remember the preachers in the in the country. And, Remember me as I stand to preach the gospel. If I go to the camp meeting uh, over here on Bristol Highway, nobody got to go. I didn't get to go, but I watched it on live stream, and um, I've noticed something about. I love camp meetings. I love old timey tent revivals. It's all dust on the floor. I don't do that anymore. Uh, horses and wagons tied up out. They don't do that anymore either. But, uh, though I do love the old, old timey camp meetings. I've seen a lot of people get saved uh, during the uh, revival. And uh, I pray that that revival will just keep spreading. Just keep spreading from Bristol Highway to all the little churches and the big churches in the area that we'd have revival in our country. We so need it. Uh, pray for Ken Bowen. He has surgery. Now I'm forgetting. Wednesday, I think. Tuesday or Wednesday. Ken Bowen. He's my neighbor. He's in uh, excruciating pain and uh, they're going to have to go. It's a, a real serious surgery. Uh, he told me yesterday, he said, well, I'm sure he probably wouldn't care if I said it, but he, the doctor told him, said, when you wake up, you're going to be in some major pain. Usually they won't tell you that you're going to be relieved, but I reckon for a day or two he's going to be suffering some major pain. So we need to pray for him, pray for his wife, 
and uh, pray for him. He's, he's uh, uh, a little anxious about it. Go ahead, Paul. I know Larry does. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. Pray for Larry Dove. I didn't know that. I, I knew that he had a back problem. Pray for the lost, absolutely. Pray for the backslidden. Pray for those that used to go to church, don't go to church, and could go to church if they wanted to go to church. Amen. Man went to sleep and never woke up. That'd be the way to go. Larry who? Larry Spencer. Amber's mother's in the hospital. What's wrong with her? They're going to put her in that chamber. That's the next thing, put you in, a, in the chamber. Yeah. I tell you what, this year, I have never seen the amount of ticks. I mean, they're in the trees. They're everywhere, and they're so small. They're, they're not big ticks like you used to have when you was growing up. These, these are just so small. As a matter of fact, you don't even think you got a tick. And uh, they bury themselves down in your skin. And uh, if you have to dig one out, it leaves a sore spot. Anything else on prayer list? Cousin Chad, how about him? He's on his Greyhound bus headed this way. He's writing a song. Uh, I want to be home. Oh, uh, he's not writing a song. Who? Connie Cobalt, that's what. Thank the Lord for oxygen. Boy, it does great wonders. Um, so many people we need to pray. So many people we need to. We need to be ministers. We need to contact some of these people by phone or social media, I guess, and uh, tell them what you're praying for. Just tell them what you're praying for. It means a lot. Somebody that pops up there, I'm praying for you today. People don't want to hear it. But pray for them anyway. Uh, Bible study, 7.30 on Wednesday night. You will be here. Okay, be back on live stream at 7.30 on Wednesday night. Uh, we were supposed to have gone to the revival this last Wednesday night, but I wasn't able to. And some of the others wasn't able to kept me. I wish you'd had them here today. I'd love to see them. Love to have them in the house of God. And that's what it's going to take. It's going to take us and the other churches in the neighborhood to, to reach the young people, reach the children. Uh, sadly, say the, some of the hearts and the adults are so hardened. The Bible plainly speaks of a time when people's hearts would be hardened and they, they would turn from a word and turn from church, wouldn't want to hear it. And we're in that time now. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I come before you this morning. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for allowing us to have church, the freedom we have to come into the house, the nice building we have. We have air conditioned, nice seats. We have comfort. And such a blessing that you you bless us continuously. 
Well, I pray for the prayer request. I pray, dear God, that each and every person. For those who are in pain, Father, I pray that you ease their pain, ease their suffering. For those who are having uh, stomach problems, Father, I pray that you'd settle their stomach. Your God, that whatever's going on, that they have see the great healing in their stomach. Those who are having back problems, Lord, I pray that your hand would be upon them. I pray, dear God, that they, as they listen to this sermon, they would feel the healing power of Almighty God touching their bodies, taking some of the taking the pain. Where old is, may new begin. May have a, a back of a twenty year old. Lord, I pray for this church. Lord, I pray to God that you bless this church in a great and mighty way and, and as, as a uh, family a family of God, that we'd step up. We'd step up and do what we're to do to, to minister to the people. Although we get a lot of no's, when we get a yes, Lord, when we get a yes and the person comes to the house of God and they give her heart and life to Jesus Christ, oh, how thankful we are. How we rejoice. We may get a lot of no's, but when we get a yes, it's so wonderful. If you did to pray for the no's, and the no's will become yeses, and, and lives will be changed, and souls will be saved. Families will be reconciled. Anger will turn to love. People will forgive. Become family again. Father, well, I pray for this sermon. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit would have control of this service. I pray that the Holy Spirit would speak through me as a vessel, as a messenger, for I can do nothing. And I know I can do nothing, and I realize that. But I come as a vessel that the Holy Spirit would speak through me. Doesn't matter how much I study, unless the Holy Spirit is speaking through me, it'll fall on deaf ears. Lord, I love you. I praise you, and I give you thanks. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, it all started about yesterday afternoon. The sky began to get dark. Wind picked up a little bit. I walked out on the back deck, and to my right, it was nothing but blue, and darkish, blackish. And to my left, kind of cloudy, but not real bad. It was dark, but and all kind of boats, people skiing, people tubing, and people, I guess, fishing, doing whatever you do on the lake. I mean, it was crowded. And I began to look at the sky and began to look at the boats, and I thought, no. Wake up, people. Wake up, you're getting ready to have a storm here. You need to get off the lake. So I went out and moved the vehicles, and because we've been having these hell storms. And I had just finished moving the vehicle when it began to rain. Lightning, the wind, oh my, the wind was something else. And then we began to get hell about the size of a nickel. And it was piling up like snow. And those people on the lake, bless their heart. I mean, you couldn't see. It was just like you could just see images of boats. I've seen this so many times before, and I think to myself, the Lord warns us by what happens in the sky. The Bible plainly tells us that the Lord warns us by the heavens. And I thought about that, thought about that this morning, and the people didn't get off the lake. I mean, you can see the the people had been there before, and the old boaters and people stays on the lake. They group out there and stays on the lake. And then you see these people that just have no clue. It made me think about it. we've had all the signs in the skies. We've had the signs in the heavens. We've had all the things that happened, tornadoes, hurricanes, uh, 
volcanoes. Uh, what am I leaving out? Just all kinds of things to warn us, as the Bible said. And like those people to my left that were standing out there on that water, which is very dangerous, it's lightning. Yes, lightning will hit you on the lake. Some few was going toward the marinas. But most was out there in the lake. What's that say? When the rapture takes place, all the signs is present. And you'll see those like yesterday. Just doing the same thing like Noah, the days of Noah. People just don't get it. And to be caught. And those people were caught. And I'm sure they were scared to death. You could hear them hollering, you know. Trying to get out of there. Trying to move. Couldn't see. Same thing's going to happen one day. It's going to happen soon. Preacher, you talk an awful lot about that. Well, I do. I'll admit it. Because I love people. and I, I used to not, but I do now. I love people. I don't want to see anybody go to hell. Today's sermon, we're going to preach the second part. I didn't get to finish last Sunday, where we were talking about um, Elijah. Elijah giving full warning. Actually, he was talking about a blessing that was to come. We talked about how he talked about the low price of grain and food. We'll read about it in a minute. Then you had a naysayer. One that wanted to come against it and wanted to complain. Didn't believe it. But we plainly know that you never underestimate the power of Almighty God. His sovereign provision. Proverbs 28 1 says, The wicked flee, though no one pursues. Something going on. The wicked flee, though no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. When a country is rebellious, it has many rulers. But a ruler with discernment and knowledge maintains order. A ruler who oppresses the poor is like a driving rain that leaves no crops. We got it short. Put her down my shirt. We're going to buy one, Matt. You know what? Everything. Since yesterday afternoon to the right now has, has been upside down. Everything I touched, I've dropped. Um, it, it's just been crazy. Um, but let's get back to the sermon. A ruler who presses the poor is like driving rain that leaves no crops. Paul said that we're to lead a life worthy of the gospel. Worthy of the gospel. Be courageous. Be not afraid. We look at the sermon. How many remember the sermon? How many was here yesterday or on live stream or uh, that remembers the sermon on last Sunday? I hope you do and I hope you took some notes. But what does God want? God wants us to open our eyes to the character of Almighty God. See who He is. Know who He is. Respect Him. Yahweh, the name came to be regarded as, in the Jewish people, so powerful, so sacred, that in 300 B.C., they didn't feel like they should even say it. These, took, these people took God serious. They took God serious. Adonai, translated as Karas, 
Heros, rather. Lord Adadai. My Lord. My Lord. I tell you that when you go before the Almighty God and you pray to Almighty God, the Bible plainly says, Jesus told his disciples, he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Elohim, God Almighty, majesty, but the most holy, most sacred, most adorable, incomprehensible, fallible, name of God, be forever praised, blessed, and loved. Adored and glorified in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Why would it say that? Under the earth. Why would it say under the earth? And all creation, all creatures of God. The Bible plainly tells us that one day all will kneel before God. All but will kneel before Jesus Christ. God the Son. And they'll give glory to God. Those people that, Terry, those people that turns their back on you now and walks away. Well, it's those people that, that doesn't, doesn't want to come to church, they don't want to hear the gospel, but they want to call and complain about what's going on in their life and expect you to give them a peaceful word. But they live in a world of sin. Those people that call the pastor and they just want the pastor to listen. I do. I do listen. But there comes a point in time when you're calling a pastor and you're telling him about your life and you know the answer and he knows the answer. I don't care a bit to listen to somebody when they're having problems. But when you come before a pastor, you come before a spiritual leader, you come before somebody in the church, and you tell them the same thing over and over, and you don't have enough uh, courage and boldness to go before the throne, lost or saved, then that's on you. The characters in today's sermon or Elisha. Remember Elisha? He wanted a double portion from Elijah. Elijah says, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. He's, he's making an announcement. The Lord has, has said something. It's a divine inspiration. It's, it's given by God. And he wants the people to know. Then you have the Syrian army. Then you have the starving Samaritans. And then you have this naysayer, this Ar Aramean Syrian. Apparently his king thought he was just the just stuff because he was his person to go to. But he didn't believe Elisha when he was prophesying. But then you have the four dying lepers. They're at the gate, can't come into the city. But they, uh, they had a question. If you were in last week's sermon, you know that they, they're at the gate and they, they, they're talking to themselves and saying, hey man, we're dying. It's a fact we're going to die. Do we die here? Do we sit here and wait to die? Or do we do something about it and go into the city where they will probably kick us out and die there? Do we go into the Syrian camp where they'll either kill us, we'll die, or they'll let us live. What do we do? And they pondered this, you know, for a while, and they thought, well, we'll just go. We're going to die. Why not? We'll just go to the Syrian camp, the Armenian Arme 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 camp. I'm having a word problem today. 
What do we do? We'll go. We'll go, we'll go down there and see what happens. So they went. And they, I'm sure they eased their way in. You know, they're, how many of you have ever seen a picture of a leper? You know, they're all bound up. They've got sores on them. I know nobody's going to touch them. They may kill them. They knew nobody was going to physically grab hold of them and throw them out of the camp. So they're easing their way down, and they go into the tent of the first one. And there's nobody there. Nobody in the camp. In the tent. Nobody in the camp. Horses is there, like I said last week. The the mules is there. The asses is there. Uh, but there's nobody there. There's a fire. There's bed clothing there. Everything that you would have in a camp is there. Their shields is there. Their spears is there. Their boards are there. And what's happened? It's like they've been raptured, but it, they weren't raptured. They were scared. What happened? God caused a loud noise. We know he caused a loud noise that they thought that there was a great army, that the, the uh, uh, Samaritans and the people had gathered together with the other people and, and the other tribes and come against them because they could hear the, the hoof beat of the horses. They could hear a sound of a great army coming upon them. They knew that they would be defeated, so they got scared. So they, before daylight, they decided, well, uh, we're leaving, and we're leaving now. Do we leave the horses? You know, we wonder why they left the horses, but I kind of figure now I know why. Because they figured if they left with the horses, the horses would be hooping on the ground and maybe making horses sounds, you know, and you'd hear the leather, you know, you ever heard a horse with the saddle on it, and hear the leather, and all this makes sense, makes the sounds of an army. They left the horses, they left the mules, they left the asses, they left everything, so it looked like they were still there, still in the camp, left the fire going, I'm sure they left a the big fire going, and lo, these four poor sick, dying lepers. Can you imagine? There it was, nobody to keep them from taking it. So what did they do? They took it. They took it out of the first tent, went and hid it. They went to the next tent, same thing. They took it and they went and hid it. Now they had it made. They had all the food, all the provisions, can you imagine the provisions for the Syri Syrian army? Enough food to feed everyone. To feed everyone of the Samaritans. They had it all. They went from poor to riches in 24 hours. All they had it all. But in verse 9 it says, And then they said one to another, We do not well. Some might say they had a conscience. Well, they also had a fear. This day is a day of good tidings. We hold our peace. For if we tarry till morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now, was it their conscience or was it their fear that was coming up on them? Because they knew that if they went against, it wasn't theirs to keep. And if they went against the king, went against the Samaritan people, and they didn't uh, let him know, then that would be a sin. That would be covetous. That'd be greed. God had blessed them in a great mighty way. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how they carried all the stuff they carried. It says they carried it and put it, they hid it. Then they decided to do the right thing. Some mistress will come upon us. Now therefore come that you may go and tell the king's household. Well, we've done good, haven't we? We've made things right. We've told the king. We 
We can be blessed now. God, we've done the right thing. It says they went in and told, told the person, and the person was to announce it, and then he told, you know, then they realized what was going on. Can you imagine? We can't imagine seeing four lepers come into a camp and people starving to death. Last week I told you how bad it was. I told you that they were eating their children, their babies. They were eating the uh, feces off the ground of birds, of doves. But here's these lepers. They come in and, and these people starving. You can imagine they still wouldn't want them in their camp. And it was customary. They had to they had to holler, uh, unclean, unclean, unclean. Matter of fact, they had to put their hands over the mouth. Three times they'd have to holler this before they could go in and approach a person. Before they could talk to you, they'd have to scream to you, unclean. I thought about this when I was reading it. I thought, unclean, unclean, unclean. And they had to put their hands over the mouth. Where are we today in a world? Where are we in our world today? Could we go around saying, unclean, 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 and wearing our, our mask? You think when God blesses you, and he wants you to give him praise that you fail to do so that there's repercussions. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name, make it known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him. Talk ye all the wondrous work. How long has it been since you did that? Glory ye in a holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. I hear people call and say, hey, things are bad. Things are bad. And I will, you know, it's okay. Things are bad. But things are not going to get any better. They're going to get worse. I've said that, but I've said it in a, in a, in a statement talking about prophecy. Yes, things are getting worse. But as far as us as Christian people, things are getting better. For every day here is one step closer to glory. It looks bad for them, but it looks great for me. It looks bad for them, but it looks great for you. Seek the Lord, his strength. Seek his face continually. I'm shaking, aren't I? Remember his marvelous works that he has done, his wonders of judgment with his mouth. You ever felt like you were having a, a moment with God? You ever felt like the Holy Spirit was all over you? The Holy Spirit was all in you. You felt like you wanted to shout. My question is, why didn't you? You wanted to shout. And you wanted to give because God had given to you. God had blessed you. God had shown you marvelous things and marvelous wonders. And did you remain quiet? How many of you have ever shouted when the Lord came upon you in a great mighty way? How many of you actually got, got outside and went to, Oh, Lord, God Almighty, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. How many of you actually done that? Done that at home? Done that by yourself, nobody else around? Let me ask you this. How many, when something happened in a great and mighty way, I didn't care if it was the parking lot here at the church or the parking lot over at McDonald's, or if it was in the mall, or if it was in Wally Ward, I did say it right. What? Lolly Ward? Wall. 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 Walmart. If it was at the steakhouse, 
Would you stand up and give praise to God? Would you give glory to God? Would you tell the person that's waiting at your table how God has blessed you? How God has brought you from sickness and, and sorrow and pain. How God has healed your baby or your child. How God has helped open the door so you would have a financial future far beyond what you would ever expect. Then it says, what are we to do with that blessing? If God blesses us, and which He does, He blesses us all the time, He blesses us with the freedom and the... And the uh, you drive a nice car in here today? You sleep in a nice bed last night. My heat pumped out. It's been out three years, but... It's okay, I've got the breeze off the lake. How many of you had a cool night last night in your house? It wasn't just so hot you couldn't stand it. Like the people in Africa, people in the Middle East. You got up this morning and put on a brand new pair of jeans, or a shirt that's not over a year old. I've still got clothes I had in high school. You believe that? Every once in a while I wear them. <laughs> well, let's get serious here. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, Malachi. That there will, I'll give you the scripture and look it up. Malachi 3, 10 and 14. Bring the whole tithe to the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Now listen to this. I told him last week, I said, you're never, test, you're never to test God. Be careful about what you're doing trying to test God because God will show you he is God, Almighty God, and he will show you for sure that he will put you in the uh, shed and, and uh, give you one that you don't forget. <coughs> Young people don't have no idea what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is he'll take you out there and give you a tan. They probably still don't know what I'm talking about. He'll take you out there and just strap your legs. You understand? Test me in this, he says, Lord Almighty, and see if I'll not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing there'll be no room enough to store it. Not, no, not enough for him to store the blessings that God will pour out on you. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops. The vines in your fields will not drop their fruit. I talked about that last week. Before they're ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Now I tell you, No country in the world has been blessed like this country. No country in the world has been blessed. And I'll have to say, over the years, we have had some rulers in this country that have made some of the poorest choices. They have sinned against the Almighty God. We've had some good leaders in this country. But overall, if you go back and look at history, look and see what the, some of their leaders did. They made poor choices. They did things not by the word of God, but by what the majority wanted in reference to material things. The material things that this world has now, the material things that our country has now, has put us in a position. We're a mighty nation. We've been blessed greatly by God, but we haven't given back to God. Preacher, you preached just last week. Well, I must, the Lord must want me to say it again. That's not what I was going to say. It's not what's here. People speak against the Lord. You believe it? We don't want the the uh, Bible in any public place. We don't want the, the Ten Commandments in any public place. We don't want the children to uh, pray in school or, or read a Bible in a school or 
say the Pledge of Allegiance in school. We don't want anything in reference to Jesus Christ in public. Keep it at home. That's something that you do personally. That's something that you do in private. You don't need to talk about Jesus out here in public. Bible plainly says that when you're a Christian, you become a minister. At that very point, very moment, that the Holy Spirit comes within you, you are a minister right then, right there. You don't, you don't have schooling, maybe, but you have the Holy Spirit to speak to you. At Pentecost, the disciples and all those with them waited for the Holy Spirit to come upon them as a fire. And from that point on, they preached, and things changed, and now we're here today because of it. When you're saved, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within you. Now, when you're saved, I'm saying, when you're saved, you actually give your heart and life to Jesus Christ, and you're committed. I'm not talking about getting saved in the head. I'm getting saved in the heart. You're a minister. You're commanded to tell people about Jesus Christ. You're commanded to tell people here you can tell people about what Jesus Christ, the Almighty God, the Holy Spirit's done in your life. Today, you don't have to quote Scripture, do you, Terry? I went to church Sunday, and well, guess what happened? That preacher went to preaching, I went squirming. That preacher went to preaching, and I felt like something was coming over me. And I felt my body temperature kind of change a little bit. Maybe it wasn't... You know, salvation is not about a feeling. I won't tell you that it's a feeling. You're going to have a special feeling when you come, but you do know that the conviction of the Holy Spirit, you know that there's something happening to you. Something's not like it was when you came in the door. You were under conviction of the Holy Spirit. You say, listen, I went to church Sunday. That preacher preached, and I went to the altar, and I got saved. I got saved. Wasn't arrogant about it. Our nation is so blessed. As last week I told you that just because you're on live stream, just because you're on live stream, I'll speak to people on live stream right now. People on live stream, I love you. I preach the gospel because I love Almighty God and Lord Jesus Christ. And I hope that you get something out of the sermons that we preach and, I, and what goes on in this church. I hope you always watch us on live stream. or they have you seated in a seat here, a nice, comfortable, padded seat. Well, the comfortable, oh, there's a comfortable up there, nice seat. You can sit anywhere you want to. But those people on live stream, you've been blessed. You've been blessed. You say, well, I can't pay my doctor bill. I can't pay my hospital bill. I can't pay my medicine. I can't pay this. I can't pay my car payment. I can't do this, I can't do that. God says, if you'll tithe, if you'll give offerings to the church, if you'll give offerings to the uh, ministry, if you get offerings to the poor, if you, if you take care of the widows, you take care of who the Bible plain tells you to take care of, I blessed you, I blessed you, I blessed you. Do you bless somebody else? And if you don't, if you don't, and you'll see me before judgment. And you'll stand accountable. The Bible plainly says it says that a rich man, it's harder for a rich man to go to heaven than it is a poor man. Why? The Bible plainly tells us it's harder for a, a rich man to go to heaven than it is a poor man, but rich men go to heaven because the heart is a heart. Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit, and he comes and knocks on that heart's door, and you say, Yes. Be my Lord and Savior. But the rich man has more material things and he's less likely to give them up. The poor has nothing and anything looks better than what he's got. But that's not why he gets saved. He gets saved because somebody's saying, hey, when you got saved and the Holy Spirit touched your heart, how did you get saved? Was you by yourself? Had you never heard anything about the... the the Holy Spirit, had you never heard anything about salvation, justification, glorification? Had you never heard anything about the Bible? Was you by yourself? No. Somebody told you. 
Somebody told you about what was going on in their life. Somebody said, hey, listen here. I've been saved a year. I'm not the man I was yesterday or a year ago. I still have faults. I'm still a sinner. I still do things I shouldn't do. But God is changing my life little by little. Ain't that right, Paul? Amen. Paul and I both can just by, I mean, say amen to that because we've both been there and done that. Okay, it's changed your life, Paul. Paul knew me before I was a preacher. Uh oh. We got a phone here or something. That's a big phone. I'm, I'm sure about it. Praise God. I thought my phone was hid somewhere, but I guess it is. Must be this tablet. tablet. Well, we'll just preach right on. I don't care about the tablets. It's almost 12 o'clock. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The people did not glorify God. The people today are not glorifying God. God wants His honor. God wants His honor. If you don't honor God, He wants to know why. Remember a few sermons back, I preached, and I talked about how God um, expects us to give glory to God when He helps us and He takes care of us and He protects us, and He watches over us, and He changes our lives. Changes our lives so we don't have the temptations that we once had. He takes us away from the places we used to go to places we want to go now that's not like the places we used to go. Amen? How many of you go to the same places you used to? How many of you talk to the same people you used to? I tell you, a lot of people in your lives, you can pray for them, but some of the people you need to get them out. If that person is not lifting you up in the Lord, if that person is not giving glory to God, if that person is not concerned with your spiritual life, you can pray for them, you can be friends with them, but I'm telling you, they're not to be the person that gives you advice. So many people go to the wrong person for advice. So many people don't believe what the Almighty God says. He says, listen, He had blessed these people. First Chronicles 16, 34, 36 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. I love that. And that verse, I love that verse. That's one of my favorite verses. And say ye, save us, O God of our salvation, and gather us together. Deliver us from the heathen. He's delivered us from the heathen. He's delivered us from the people we used to be around that used to get us in trouble. No. He's delivered us from the people that we used to be around that I used to get them in trouble. Gather us together, deliver us from the heathen, that we may give thanks to thy holy name and glory in thy praise. Blessed is the Lord of Israel forever and ever. All the people said, What? Amen. And praise the Lord. How do you praise the Lord? How do you give thanks? You give thanks in prayer. You give thanks in your time to God. I mean, how many of you actually have time that you spend with the Lord on a daily basis? This is my time. I don't care if somebody calls and wants me to go to uh, Wally World or Wawa or what you want to call it or, or wants you to go down here to... Uh, the fishing hole or whatever you want to do it. If that's your time, during that time that you normally give thanks to God, you need to give thanks to God. Prayer room. It by plain the Bible says to have a prayer room. Give yourself your time. Verbally. Praise God. 
verbally tell him how he's been good to you. Verbally tell him what he's done for you. So many people don't want to do that. They don't want to say, well, God, you've done this for me, you've done that for me, but they just want to uh, say, well, I'm blessed. We're blessed as a nation. We're blessed as a state. We're blessed as a, a county. We're blessed as Christians. We've been adopted into the family. But it says, give thanks. It also says, all of it belongs to God. That car that you're driving that's going to take you home, those clothes on your back belongs to God. He just letting you be a steward of them. He just letting you, I guess he's saying, I, I just want to see what they do. I just want to see, they gave you a raise last week. Wow. I paid my house off last week. Wow. They settled the estate, probate court, whatever they do, and I, you won't believe it. Granny left me a, a hunk of money and a lot of land. So much stuff I don't want to do with it. I don't even know what I'm going to do with it. This is when it really gets me. Did you think of the church? Did you think of the church? If you've got a will and you don't have the church that you're a member of or the Lord leads you to whatever, give to them. I think maybe you might be questioning about it, reckon. A tenth. I've watched preachers lay out. I've watched John Hagee lay out. I don't have $100 bills. I mean, right now, I don't have $10 in ones. He lays out 10 ones or 10 $100 bills. He lays them out there and lays them in a row. This is the first one he got, and, and this is the last one. So this is number one, this is number 10. If you're going to please God, you're going to give to God. Which one of those do you give God? You give the one in the middle. You give the one on the end. You give the one after you've paid the mortgage and paid the child care and prayed for dance lessons and you, you prayed for camp and you prayed for, I mean, you pay, I keep saying pray. You, you paid for a, a little league. You, you paid for the, the office party. How many guns have I gone through? Eight, ten in line, and you go them through all that. Let me get down to this last one. Law, you know, I told the kids we was going to go to the beach. That's just a week away. And if I give this, we won't have no man to go to the beach on. Which one of the ten $100 bills did you get? That very first one that was laid down there is what you give. You give the first. He says, test it. Test me and I'll show you. You give me the first and all these others. I'll show you what I can do. I'll show you what I'll do. But we have this problem where, well, I, and I've heard preachers say, well, you're poor. Well, you're, you're uh, on a fixed income. Uh, after you pay your doctor bills, after you pay your uh, medicine, you pay for somebody to come take you to the grocery store and the groceries and you're going down through here. If you've got enough, you can tithe. <laughs> I'm not preaching to the fixed income people. Don't get me wrong. I'm preaching to everybody. I'm telling everybody, you give the very first fruits and he'll bless you. He'll bless you. Over and over and over. I've seen it happen. He's blessed me when I thought, there ain't no way. He's blessed me. When I had construction company, 
we didn't have the money to make the payments. Of, and when, when we talk about payments, sometimes you know things that happen. Things happen in, in business, especially in construction, because the weather dictates what you do, and so many things dictate what you do. And and you get down there, and you've got an eight thousand dollar equipment payment, and you've got a five thousand dollar dozer payment, you've got a another six thousand uh, dollar backhoe payment. All that adds up. And when you pay all of it out and you decide you're going to pay the tenth at the end, but there's no tenth at the end, and you pay what you can pay, I guarantee next month you're going to have the same problem. Paul says worse. Exactly right. But when you pay that first, that tenth at the very beginning, now you may have month after month, it's hard. You may just barely make it, but you're going to make it. God says, test me, I'll show you. Test me. I, I, I asked the people on live stream. I'd like to hear back from them. I'd like for you to see you test the Almighty God. I'd like to see you give. And it says it says tithes and offerings. What does that mean? Tithes is the first. What's the offering? Offerings what you give above that. That's what you're giving to God because He's blessed. Because the tenth is already His. The offering is, hey, God blessed you. Give it. Tithes and offerings. He says, give it. Bring it to the storehouse that the people will have food. And what he's saying is, bring it to the storehouse. That, remember last week when I preached and I talked about all the different ministries involved. And he says to give it because the little woman that's, that's just had a baby that, that she's pro-life and she says, I'll have that baby. And the people want to help her. The church wants to help her and, and, and help raise that baby food for the baby. They said, well, government takes care of that. I don't care about the government. I'm talking about what God says. God doesn't say the government. He says, give. But that widow that can't get to the pharmacy and she needs to get medicine and, and here she is. She needs medicine and she needs somebody to help her get groceries. You drive right on by her and you don't give her a love offering and you don't tie that the church can help her. And I, I had a list last week and he could go on and on and on the homeless. The homeless. The prison ministry. A lot of people say, I'm not going into a jail. I'm not going into a prison. What am I saying? Not only do you give a tenth of your income, you give a tenth of your time. A tenth of your time. That means that you give back. You're willing to give at least a tenth of your time to ministry that you are actually involved in ministry. And what are you going to give as an offering? That's, get out there and do it. Now, when I say that, be safe. A woman never goes by herself. Two men go together, two women go together with a man. I'm telling you. What happened? What happened? What, what happened? The greed and the covetousness and the pride, and the naysayer. Oh, naysayer, when this happened, you know, the king said, oh, wow, we don't have to feed everybody, but we've got to do something about it. We've got to make it sure we control it. Government wants to control it, right? Government wants to control it, right? You see it? Well, so the people hear about it, and they come just to black multitudes. They come in and they're rushing and starving to death. Can you imagine? You've seen pictures of people, you know, when they were in, the camps. The Jews were in the camps. The people were starving. Got crazy. They decided to run. And they won't get their food. They won't get that food. They gonna get them something to eat. Now I'm talking like hillbilly. But they were gonna get them something to eat. The king says, okay. The Lord that I lean on, that I trust, and which is actually the naysayer that talks in the king's ear and says, well, you don't want to do that. Just like the naysayers in the church, you don't want to do that. No, you don't want to have a building fund. You don't want to have uh, uh, another fund. You don't want to have this. You don't, you don't have another ministry. Uh, the naysayers, the no, no, it don't work. 
We've done this for years the way we've done it. It's going to be the same until I die. No, you're not bringing in new music or not bringing in uh, new study plans. It's going to be the same naysayers. Everything the pastor does is wrong. Everything the leaders do, but do they do? Do they lead? No. Do they teach? No. Do they sing? No. I'll tell you something about singing in just a second, if you remind me. But the naysayer, here he is. I'm gonna pull my shirt down, Melissa. The naysayer, King puts him in charge of the gate. Go we'll put him in charge of or uh, distributing the food. Here's the government now. The government's going to distribute the food. The people charge the gate, and what happens? They trample him. The Bible says that Elisha said, Hey, this bounty that I'm telling you about that's going to happen, you're going to see it, but you're not going to eat it. Well, he saw it, and they ran all over him. They trampled him to death. You know what? I could make three sermons out of this. I've still got enough for another sermon. You want me to just keep preaching? I'm telling you what. I just love kings. I just love kings. I was going to read what it said there. and um, Anybody got that handy? What? Well, Elijah first tells him in the camp. I want, you, I want us to read this. He tells him something about um, somebody look up 2 Kings chapter 7. Is that what I said? We're in chapter 7. Talks about he's uh, <coughs> going to buy a, a, a grain of wheat, the grain of, what does it say about? I did have it in my mind. I could quote scripture. What's it say? All right, all right, wait a minute, Paul. All right, Paul says it's a, a measure of fine flour. That's what it said. Sold for a shackle. Now, this was unheard of at that time. It's kind of like us today with this gas price and the oil we got right now. I paid, uh, I think it was $5 or something, diesel right here beside us to go get that tractor. What else did it say, Paul? Two barleys for a nickel. I mean, it's just unheard of. That's why that guy said, well, man, you're crazy. That's not going to happen. We're, we're in control of the government. That's not going to happen. We are the government. We are the government. That's not going to happen. And Elisha said, you'll see it, but you sure won't eat it. We're going to see it, and we're going to eat it. We're going to see how God blesses the people that seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. We're going to see how the streets of gold. We're going to see glory. But before we see that, we're going to see God's blessing. We're going to see God's blessing on our lives. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Do you show God that you appreciate it, that you're blessed? I preached this sermon last week. You know, we've been here going, this is going on our fifth year. And I want to, people on live stream to know something. We've never passed an offering plate. One or two times we we passed a hat or something for somebody that came in and, and sang praise and worship team or whatever. Just like, like the last time that young girl that came in and we passed a hat and 
I don't want to give back to you. I mean, it was quite, I mean, they passed a hat and appreciated it and blessed her. They blessed this young lady. This church is never, you look around, there's no envelopes to put ties in. I don't think, are there? I think. They're over here, I think. That's what I was getting at. We don't, you know, we don't put it right in your face. To where, you know, we don't have somebody saying, hey, here's an offering plate. Maybe we should. Maybe we should remind her. Here's an offering plate and pass it around. From the very first time that we had a sermon here, we never did it. Because I said, I want people to come to hear the gospel. I want people to come and know that we're not about a hand taking their money. I want to know, I want people to know that my God will supply all our needs. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I want you, or all the cattle on a thousand hills have reported. I want you to understand that from the very first sermon we preached in here, we have never made it about money. Never. Is that right, man? I don't like money. I don't like dealing with money. Only in the last year or so, how long has it been, Matt? Two years? And we decided we'd put a box on the wall over here. Used to, we just had to, I don't know what we had. A what? Oh, we put, yeah, we well, got a trunk here. We got a trunk here, and we had a box down in the trunk. And they'd say, where do you put your money? And say, in the trunk. I guess they thought we was going to raise that lid to be full of money and gold, no. But we put a box over here on the wall. All you people on live stream, what you know, we put a box over here on the wall. And that's where you, when you you visit, we have you fill out a card. That's where you put your card. As you go in or come out the door, you, you put your, your tithes and your offerings. We don't mention a whole lot about it. We don't talk a whole lot about it. They would, Matt, it's only been in the last six months that I begin to talk about it. Because... I want people to know that it's not about the money. I feel like in a way, by me not talking about it, by me not preaching on tithing, I would mention tithing and offerings in different sermons from time to time, but I wouldn't preach on it. And I feel like maybe I have done you an injustice, and those on live stream, an injustice, that I didn't push that because by me not pushing it and by you not being felt to give, maybe I have made you less sensitive where you did not realize that by giving you receive. But if you've been in any of our Bible studies or any, if, if you've been in this church at all, you know that I have talked about it. Is that right, Paul? The man didn't believe. He wasn't willing to give. He was the government. He was the, the government. And they trampled him. He saw God's blessing. He didn't want to believe it. You've seen God's blessing and he wants you to test him. So I'm asking you to test God. That he may bless you. And that this church and other churches, I'm not just talking about this church, I'm talking about churches in general. Over and over, I hear people say, I drove by, that church is closed. That church is closed. That church is closed. You won't believe it, but the little church that we had down in the country for so long that everybody went to, the weeds has grown up, the grass has grown up, and there's nobody there. It's closed. You people that's not going to churches and not being part of churches, not being part of what God told you to be a part of ministry, and come and uplift one another, be there for one another, and give. Bring it to the storehouse. I'm preaching it now. I preached it last Sunday. I feel like it's time for me to say, bring it to the storehouse. 
I'm tired of these seats being empty. I'm tired of preaching to uh, just a few people. I'll preach to a few people all day long, but I'm tired of coming and preparing a sermon and you on live stream sitting at home and could be here and uplift one another. Listen, come, give, give, come. Be a part of God. Be a part of the kingdom. Seek God's plan for your life. Seek the righteousness of God and see if he doesn't bless you beyond measure. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I come before you. Lord, I thank you. I, I, I just praise you. Lord, I, I don't even have the words to, to say that for the gratitude of how you bless me, how you, you've taken me as a vessel. You've touched my body that I can stand in the pulpit and preach the gospel. Lord, you've blessed me with a nice home. You've blessed me with vehicles and clothes. You've blessed me with two grandchildren and my daughter and uh, son-in-law. you blessed me with family. Lord, you've blessed me with a church family that I'm so proud of and I'm I, that I love so much. Lord, I'm so grateful. So grateful, Lord, that in the time that we've been here, I have had the great privilege and the great honor to lead people to Jesus Christ. I've had the privilege to baptize. I've had the privilege to, to um, preach their weddings. I've had the humbling experience and the honor to preach the funerals of the people that attended this church and, and others and some that didn't even attend church. Lord, you bless me. You bless me in a great and mighty way, and I thank you. And I pray that every person that's hearing my voice will get on their knees, that they'll take a minute and just think about what, what they're going to say. Think about what they're going to say to the Almighty God. And they'll begin to thank Him. They'll begin to praise Him. They'll begin to think about what has been said here. They'll begin right with the, the Lord that they'll repent. And that they'll give. They'll give of their tithes. They'll give of their offerings. But not just in a financial way, Lord. It brings joy to my heart to see them give of their time. They'll commit to at least a tenth of their time a day. A tenth of their time a month to the ministry of the church. And they'll get on their knees and they'll say, Show me. Show me, Almighty God. Show me what you want me to do. And he will. And I know you will. Lord, as a church, I'm asking you, and I'm sure every person that's in this church, involved in this church, is asking you right now. Show us. Show us. Show us. For these things I pray in your most precious, wonderful name. Amen.